Kira is low. Kira is down, but the core is low as well. That's Urel to fall. Danny's still working. 12%. There's Greymane. There's Brightwing. And the core is saved at 10% health. That's red. Oh, my gosh. Red is tearing through the members of Bronze 6. Somehow, Ferret's going to survive. Hello and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. I am the Crushinator and tonight I have the pleasure of bringing you a slightly late Division A Round 1 matchup. Don't Die First Minute is taking on Game of Throws here in our best of three single elimination. Winner moves on, loser goes home for the season. Teams are ready, teams are in the lobby. Should be getting started here in just a moment. Hope you're all having an excellent day. Hope you've all managed to find me here on our main secondary channel here for NGS. Looks like the teams are giving me the R's. Let's go to map select. We're gonna be kicking things off on Braxis Holdout here for map number one. Battlefield of Eternity, Dragonshire, Sky Temple, and Towers of Doom are your map bans for this series. Let's get into that draft. Here we are. Draft number one opening up with the Deathwing ban from Don't Die First Minute. Not one that we see on Braxis a lot, but Deathwing does do a very good job of holding points. Having that constant slowing lava pool, being unstoppable, walking around can be that early game bump in power that you might need on a map like Braxis Holdout. Tahaka gonna be the ban here from Game of Throws. Tahaka does sometimes make an appearance on Braxis to tilt fights in the bottom lane. The more popular global I would say is Brightwing. And a more popular, even pseudo-global, tends to be Genji. So I'm interested if Genji is going to make an appearance here on Braxis Holdout. Or if anyone's going to be running some sort of hero that can go visit that offlane. Imperius the band from Don't Die First Minute, really focusing in on those potential offlaners in our opening bands. There goes Johanna. Still the premier wave clear tank of the bunch. Because now we're going to see Don't Die First Minute's first pick. Let's see what they're thinking here for the first one on Braxis. I'm thinking Vala. Uther! Okay, that's pretty good. Christinator going Uther first pick. A couple different ways you can go with this. Uther is the one healer that tends to tip the hand towards a double healer setup. You run sort of that Uther tank. But you can run Uther solo healer if you're going for that sort of level one gank sort of comp. Top Gun grabbing the Anduin, definitely a good pick into the Uther, saving that one target. Mr. Hustler opting for the Junkrat here. Tremendous wave clear on Brax's holdout and really outstanding point control over those beacons. Don't die first minute. Gonna grab up a global here. Robot Wizard taking the fall stad. Wild Pants opting for the blaze. Probably our best offlaner of the bunch right now. Game of Throws looking across. Uther, Falstad, Blaze. I'm probably thinking about a Stukov ban. Uther, Stukov is a particularly nasty combo. We'll see what Game of Thrones is worried about here. Can you get rid of, get rid of Hogger? Interesting. Hmm. So I guess they were thinking it was a potential Blaze main tank. Which could still be possible. You can run Blaze main tank, Uther, solo heal. Just a big stun combination up front. 
Don't die first minute removing Anubarak here. Anubarak being able to take one healer out of the equation with that cocoon and focus the other one down is a great way to break a double healer comp. Beachy Man taking these stitches. So we've got a stitches and a Junkrat sort of wombo synergy here from Game of Throws. Bella going for Orphea. Solid all-around damage dealer Orphea. Might have a little bit of trouble into the stun train that's coming through from Don't Die First Minute, but if you position well and use those dashes effectively, you can bait out some abilities for sure. Don't Die First Minute looking to round out their comp. There's still a lot of different ways they could go with these last two picks. Let's see how they want to build here. Rhaegar going to be our second healer picked up by Toasty Buns, and the sound is going to grab that Genji. I'm assuming this is a Blaze top lane with Genji visiting. They could potentially do a Falstad top lane as well. It would be a little bit unorthodox, but not impossible. But that would leave them pretty light on damage in the bottom lane. So I'm assuming we see Blaze go top. Mojo last pick here for Game of Throws. Needing some off lane. Gonna be Ragnaros. Ooh, a gutsy pick into the Genji team. Mojo gonna have to play especially careful versus the Blaze and the inevitable Genji that'll be up in that top lane. But a very strong Braxis hero, as long as you can stay alive. All right, comps are set. I'll be getting going into Braxis holdout here in just a moment. Here we go. Game number one on the left in the blue in our playoff match today. It's Don't Die First Minute. Robot Wizard on the Falstad, Chrisinator on Genji, Wild Pants playing the Uther with a Sound 51 on the Blaze, and we've got Toasty Buns on Rhaegar. Systems online. On the right and the red, we have Four Game seconds. of Throws. Mr. Hustler on the Junkrat, Bella 27 on the Orphea, Top Gun Four. 707 Three. on the Anduin, Two. Beachy Man Four. playing Stitches, we've got Mojo Three. on the Ragnaros. Robot Wizard stepping up there, looking for some stackaroos. He'll avoid the hook as well. Four stacks on that level one. Four Falstad. Uther going to be looking for auto attacks on that level one quest. Stitch is trying to grab the orbs. Regen globes, I should say. For the hungry for more. Genji already peeling away, looking for Mojo in the top lane. The sound gets the quick stun, and Genji's over the wall here. Now the oil is down as well. Ragnaros just slowed all the way out. Uther going to be going down in the bottom lane. Mojo will fall on the top side. One for one across the map here. So far, no one peeling out to the top lane for now. They're just going to let Rag move up there and grab as much experience for now. Game of Throws, ooh, put quite a bit of damage onto Robot Wizard. Falstad having to get back behind the wall there, receive a little bit of healing. Genji caught by the Junkrat trap there. Christinator taking some hits, but that Uther Rhaegar is going to just top everyone off after those kill attempts. Genji leaking up towards the top side once again here. Don't Die First Minute is getting their easy camp out first. As Ragnaros trying to stay safe up in the top lane knowing that Genji's in the area. But with knowing that Genji's in the area, we're going to see an invade here from Game of Throws. Toasty Bun's in trouble. Trying to walk it away here will be taken down. Chrisinator over the wall working on Mr. Hustler, but will not be able to hold that camp for long. I really like the map awareness here from Game of Throws. They know Genji is going to be going up to that top lane quite a bit, and they're taking advantage of that by pushing through the bottom lane, grabbing that extra siege, grabbing that camp. That's going to force Genji to stick around here on the bottom side. Still split on these beacon points here as Chrisinator moves in for a bit of poke and steps right on back. Ooh, root combo, Wild Pants thrown into the back there by Junkrat. 
Gets the stun and tries to move away here. Looks like Uther will get out. Bella dueling with Chrisinator. Orphe a pretty good duelist if you're landing your abilities. Top Gun peeling away there with the Chastise. Hook goes out onto Toasty Buns. Rhaegar gets into wolf form. Manages to avoid the concussion mine there. Blaze so far holding the top side without too much issue. Ragnaros just kind of has to play safe knowing that Genji might be visiting at any time. Hook goes out, gonna hit Wild Pants this time. There's a root. Ooh, the cleanse is not gonna be enough to get Uther on out of there. It's another kill for Game of Thrones. Genji showing on the bottom side here. Gonna be knocked off the point for now. Orphea was heading to the top lane for a moment just to try to grab some of that experience. Is Chrisinator gonna be the one that'll be pulled in next? Beachy Man doing a really good job with these hooks so far. Has to go tap and get some mana. It seems like we're at a little bit of a stalemate here. Ragnaros can't really bully out Blaze in the top lane. And this combo from, uh, from Don't Die First Minute so far hasn't really been able to crack onto the point. With Stitches back, this could be their opportunity. They do step up and they are going to start some beacon progress here. But Beachy Man is now on the way. Bella gets pulled back to safety as Wild Pants peels him on backwards. Crawling on the point here once again. Great split by Junkrat. Robot Wizard managing to barrel roll away as Chrisinator trying to get the last hit here onto Bella. Will not get it. A brawl continues here, but endless brawling is going to be favorable for the double healer composition. Orphea caught there by Genji at the gate. This beacon progress now soaring past 60. Mojo finally able to push out the sound in the top lane, stops the channel at 78%, but Genji had on up there to make sure that advantage is short-lived. Mojo feels the heat not going to go and answer the call on the point. Orpheus is going to come across here, but it's going to be too late. The beacon is now 100 to 0. Or don't die first minute. Bella is going to be caught and taken down there. Solid work by Genji. So here comes the Zerg wave in the bottom lane. Ooh, Wild Pants nearly thrown over the wall there. Genji has been doing a great... Or sorry, Junkrat has been doing a really nice job of boarding with those concussion mines. It is a concussion mine build here for Mr. Hustler, so there's extra range on that mine. Beachy Man trying to tank the point here. Wave is mostly down, as Wild Pants going to be hooked in once again here. Chrisinator warping on back to safety. Wild Pants almost taken out there. Robot Wizard in trouble as well. Manages to get away. Bella putting the chase onto Genji. Nice dodge on the Shadow Waltz. Robot Wizard way far forward there. Has managed to back off. So far, don't die first minute. Have about a level lead on experience. As they're looking for Ragnaros once again. Big stun from the sound. Chrisinator comes on in. Swift strike, and that is going to be it for Mojo. It's a very deadly combo, but here comes Game of Throws. They're coming up here with a vengeance. Chrisinator uses the swift, swift strike to get away. The sound's nearly getting bumped back, but had jet propulsion. Now Orphea chasing on forward here. That's going to be it for Blaze. Tens are chosen here, and Anduin gets taken out by the X-Strike. Robot Wizard pushing two away with the Mighty Gust. Bella going to be able to dart back to safety. Beachy Man, though, not going to be so lucky. Couple of kills for the price of one there for Don't Die First Minute. You saw those heroics come on out. It's Bunker, Ancestral Healing, Divine Shield, X-Strike, and Ancestral... Did I say Ancestral? Bunker, Ancestral. Yeah, you got the picture. <laughs> 
Ten's about to be here for Game of Throws. We'll see what they want to pick up for their heroics. Looks like we've got Gorge, Light Bomb, Rip Tire. Lava Wave here for Ragnaros as well. Oh, Uther's going to be put into the belly here. Top Gun trying to time out the Light Bomb is a bit too early. D Shield going to be used by Uther, but the sound gets a giant stun there on the low side. Orphea drops the Eternal Feast as Ragnaros is going to be the first picked off. Top Gun is going to be going down next. Don't die first minute. Making great use of those ults. Uh-oh, Bella might have stepped a little bit too far forward here. Genji gets the last hit. That will be a triple kill for Don't Die First Minute. With that triple kill, they're going to go and grab themselves a boss here. No problem there. Christinator are going to be hooked over, but it's Genji, so not too worried about it. Boss will be going down the bottom lane, as Beacon Progress is going to be secured by Don't Die First Minute once again. Ragnaros just trying to step up and deal with that while the clash continues on the top side. Hook goes out. Uther going to be pulled in once again here. Jet Propulsion is denied. Wildpants in trouble. There's the Light Bomb. Finds a quick stun onto two, but Ancestral Healing is going to get Uther out of trouble. Christinator in the back. Uh -oh. They've been caught out a little bit too far. Gets the long jump, but will be hooked right back in by Beachy Man. Robot Wizard with a fantastic gust. Chrisinator gets away here. Bella. Ooh, that's going to be enough healing. Bella nearly got counter killed for the effort. All the while, though, the beacons were progressing. That's another 100 to 0 here for Don't Die First Minute. Oh, great hook combo. Wild Pants, though, has the cleanse. Robot Wizard gets away. Lava Wave top, and we are going to see Ragnaros become a structure here to defend this push. Make short work of the Zerg Wave. Ragnaros coming on out of there as the sound into the back here has to pop the bunker early. Beachy Man being taken low as Chris and Eater gets the execute. Stitches goes down. Bella, the next one to be chased. X Strike lands, and that'll be it for Orphea. Double kill coming out. Or don't die first man. Robot Wizard, oh, gets a guts there onto Mr. Hustler, but the rest of the team, I don't know if they were ready for that one. Part of the gate was still up, so we couldn't get that charge in from Blaze. Robot Wizard currently 158 stacks. On that base, on that level one Q quest. Look at that damage from Robot Wizard. Chrisinator tries to get back to safety. Mojo chasing forward with the meteor. So right now, don't die first minute. Locking in that two level lead. being taken here as Game of Throws cleans up that top lane. Ichi Man is holding it down here on the bottom side. Still over a minute till the boss is back. Looks like we've got a camp invade coming on through from Don't Die First Minute. Chrisinator over the top there as the sun gets the stun onto two. Huge combo there onto Top Gun. Anduin going to fall, but Sound is in the mix there. Receives two healing ults. Divine Shield and Ancestral Healing, but use the Jet Propulsion to go right back in. We'll end up trading out for Orphea there. I tell you, I mean, you gotta be aggressive on the Blaze, but that's that's a play that's gonna get you in trouble with your healers. <laughs> they blow all their cooldowns on you, they give you both ults, and then, uh... Oops. Sorry, team. It's okay. It happens. Ultimately, camp is still going to be stolen off of that trade. Worth for uh, Don't Die First Minute. Push through the bottom lane here as the Bruiser camp is collapsing in. Beacon's activating once again here. 
13 is here for stitches, so Beachy Man's going to have a lot longer of an engage opportunity. Beacons are getting ready to activate. We see Collapse here on the bottom side. Robot Wizard going to be hooked into the mix here. Wild Pants trying to move forward for a save, and oh my gosh, you barely got to see Falstad at all. Taken out by the pick combo of, D of Game of Throws. He's looking for a wraparound flank, but most of their damage in Falstad's not here right now. Sound going to step on the point for the meantime. That's a quick stun. Chrisinator's going to get into the back for a moment here. Bunker used. I'm not sure why they're pushing the issue so much here. They don't have Falstad. Pushed back now by the Rip Tire. Wild Pants peels away with the Hammer of the Lightbringer. Hook goes out onto Toasty Buns as Rhaegar moves back to safety. Mojo in some trouble as X-Strike lands. Chrisinator trying to get the pick here. Ragnaros goes down as Falstad has rejoined the fight. Beachy Man will be next to fall. Orphea trading out, but too many stuns. That is Orphea going down. Falstad with the triple killing blow here. Uh oh, it looks like we have a disconnect. Let's see if there's going to be a pause here. There it is. Pause comes on out, so we'll come back in just a minute. All right. We are back in the mix here as bottom keep wall is going to be taken down. Wild Pants ooh, has to put the self D shield out. Good cooldown to bait out there by Game of Throws, but now they've got another set of Zerg wave on the way. Gonna be pushing through the bottom lane here. Each man looking for a hook into the back. Blocked by the minion wave. Ooh, nice root combo. Robot Wizard could be in trouble there. Falstad popped. Now Blaze is gonna be the one taken away here. Light Bomb just a scooch too early once again. But the sound, not gonna have too many places left to go. Is that enough movement speed? No, hooked right back in by Stitches. Blaze goes down. Still, the keep will fall here. But overall, two kills on the defense is exactly what Game of Thrones needed there. Get a little catch-up experience. They've got 16s now. And their core is unscratched. Rest of... Don't die. First minute. Peeling on up to the top lane. Boss is available, but Falstad is about to be back on the battlefield here. Game of Throws, it looks like they're thinking about it. Yeah, they're going to try to rip it here. Genji goes and scouts and sees the boss is at half. I don't know if Falstad gets here in time. The fly is coming through. It looks like, yes, Robot Wizard will be here. Don't die first minute. Going to try to hold their cooldowns. A lot of health bars are low on the side of Game of Throws right now. There's the contest. Gust off the point, and the boss will... Oh, not to be stolen yet, but Mr. Hustler too low on health. Boss is stolen by Don't Die First Minute. No kills just yet. Toasty Buns hooked back in. Bell is stunned and taken down. Starting that boss just a little too late was Game of Throws. Falstad was able to join. The chase continues here as Stitches will be the next to go down. Junkrat actually throwing a lot of damage around there. Nearly got the counter kill onto Toasty Buns. But the two kills in that scuffle will belong to Don't Die First Minute. Mojo trying to step up for that wave clear. The sound gets the stun. Ooh, Mojo taking some damage there. Was stunned inside the boss AoE. And that is Ragnaros picked off. Top keep goes down. Boss still pretty healthy here. 40 seconds on Ragnaros. Don't Die First Minute might just be pushing for the win here. X-Strike, oh, on top of the stun. That's Junkrat to go down. Orphea falls as well. And this looks like it's going to be the game. Core shielding is gone. This is Don't Die First Minute with a 21-kill win here on Brax's holdout. Taking game number one of our best of three today. Well played and GG. Very nice job. Don't die first minute.
putting out the threat in the early game and kept on the pressure all throughout game number one. Game of Throws, they were starting to stabilize. They are starting to show that burst towards the end of the game, but unfortunately just a little too little too late. We'll see if they can bring it back in game number two. Let's go to the post game. Checking out the comp here, checking out the stats. Robot Wizard on the Falstad, 77 and a half thousand hero damage for Don't Die First Minute. Bella on the Orphea, very nice 69,000 hero damage for Game of Throws. We'll take a look at the talents here as we update the scoreboard and we will get prepared for game number two. Alrighty. We are going to Alterac Pass here for game number two. This time, once again, chosen by Game of Throws. Trying to go to one of their stronger maps to see if that's what it takes to come back in this series. Let's go into the draft. Here we are, Alterac Pass. Well known as my favorite map. <laughs> oh, it's such a difficult map to... There's a way to cheese the map, but there's no, it's it's not like Cursed Hollow where you can interrupt rotations, you can be places in the early game that you're not expecting. Invading is incredibly difficult to do on Alterac Pass. So all the cheesing comes in delay. And delay is not exciting. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's a map that sometimes could use a little bit extra excitement. That's all I'm saying. There's not a lot of opportunities to do much on Alterac Pass outside of doing your chores and getting towards objectives. It's quite unfortunate. Anduin going to be the new man this time here from Game of Throws. As the Sound 51, happy to lock in this Hogger first pick. Hogger, of course, known for solo taking that mid-camp with very little investment. Ooh, Uther Vala picked up here by Game of Throws. So stealing away that Uther and pairing it with the probably the best, you know, consistent damage dealer in the game in Vala. Robot Wizard opting for the Falstad once again, and Wild Pants will happily grab up that Johanna that dodged the, uh, the early ban. Game of Throws. They've got their healer. Unless they're looking for two healers, they could ban one out. Let's see what they're thinking here. I'd be banning out a healer, but we'll see what their thoughts are. They're going to ban away the Lucio. Lucio, great cleanse healer. Decent enough terrain on Alterac Pass to move around. Not the best map for it, but there's enough of it. Lucio can keep up that movement speed. Don't die first minute. They're looking at the Uther Vala. I called the Stukov combo once again. We saw Rhaegar doing some good work alongside Uther in game number one. It's going to be a Kel'Thuzad ban. Hmm. I thought the Kel'Thuzad player was on Don't Die First Minute. Interesting. Could it be we have two Kel'Thuzad players in this lobby? Game of Throws, looking for the meat of their comp here. See if it is going to be a hyper carry Vala or if it's just a solo heal Uther. Mr. Hustler going for the Alarak Beachy Man on Stukov. So it is that classic Uther Stukov double healer. Alarak's an interesting kicker. It's an extra melee up front. A little bit of self-sustain, but not a lot. It's going to be relying on the Uther and Stukov. Vala is also going to be relying on Uther and Stukov quite a bit. Sometimes it can be difficult to have two heroes that are demanding all the healing. 
So we'll see if Game of Thrones can balance their positioning well on that front. Ooh, Chrisinator going for that Mephisto. I like that pick here. Into the double healer, into the triple melee. Toasty Buns opting for Brightwing. As the healer here. Mojo on the last pick. I imagine we're... Hmm, what could we see here? Because Uther, Alarak, and Stukov can all offlane if necessary. Well, I want to see if they end up actually picking a Bruiser or not. They're going to go to the Ragnaros once again. Okay. Ragnaros has similar strengths on Alterac Pass compared to Braxis in terms of just lane coverage and late game wave clear. Alarak is an interesting kicker. I'll, I want to see how they uh, how they string that together. Because that is a lot of upfront melee into a Mephisto. Here we go. Game number two. On the left and the blue, we have Don't Die First Minute. The sound on Hogger. Chrisinator playing Mephisto. Toasty Buns on the Brightwing. Robot Wizard playing Falstad. And we've got Wild Pants on the Johanna. On the right and the red, we have Game of Throws. Mr. Hustler on the Alarak, Top Gun on the Uther, Mojo on Ragnaros, Beachy Man playing the Stukov. Who did I miss? Top Gun on Uther? Bell on Vala. Bella's on the Vala. That's who I missed. Robot Wizard going to fly into the mid once again, looking for those stacks. Only one, two stacks that time. Oh, nearly taken down by uh, the Lurking Arm. Of Stukov, that low blow on one, showing the value. Once again, down to Brawl is our double healer composition. Ooh, Falstad pulled and taken down. First blood goes over to Game of Throws. On brand has been called for Don't Die First Minute. <laughs> Sound going to pop the Unstoppable and try to move into the lane. Pretty good spin there. Still a little bit in range. Alarak is going to get the pull, and that will be it for Hogger. Just slowed down a little bit too much by that Mud Pit. That'll be a second kill for Game of Thrones. The roles are a little bit reversed here in game number two. The early game is absolutely going to be in control of Game of Throws here as we Robot Wizard almost taken out. Under 40 health there. But later game, Falstad scales up really nicely. Mephisto scales up really nicely. And Johanna damage starts to kind of go off the charts <laughs> in the late game. The sound, popping the unstoppable, getting away from the gank squad. We'll have the opportunity to go back and start up this siege camp. Hogger yeah. just working on this clear as we see Game of Throws sending three over to get this camp rolling. Mojo, a little bit far out in lane, is going to be pulled in by the Johanna. Blounded, and that will be it for Ragnaros. That's unfortunately the downfall of Ragnaros. Very high damage, great wave clear post level 10. Has a big cooldown for team fights and defense, but it's a little bit hampered by the lack of mobility and the lack of health when it comes to the other bruisers. Camp's going to meet in the mid here. It'll be quickly cleared away by both squads. First objective phase getting ready to come up in the top side of the map here. Ragnaros taking a couple of extra hits there, but Mephisto's burst damage not enough to get through. Toasty Buns. Staying behind the gate there, staying safe. So our first objective phase is ready. Wild Pants is going to see that scout. Robot Wizard just moving away from Top Gun there. A 
Let's have that stun when it's safer. Robot Wizard. Speaking of safer, Mojo came up there and Bella vaulted down. That was nearly a pinch that uh, Game of Thrones picked up. Hogger getting that back camp started early. Spinning it on down. So right now, Game of Throws, they've got their sevens. They're going to roll up towards this top lane here. Toasty Buns, ooh, it has enough movement speed to get away from the Telekinesis. Good lane pressure. Oh, Mephisto, Chrisinator in trouble. Oh, no. Fortunately, just buys a little bit too much time for Game of Throws to move forward and grab that kill. Three kills to one here. Mid camp pushing in hard versus this wall as Ragnaros is finally able to respond with that camp clear. The rest of the crew from Game of Thrones is going to have to deal with this wave. Did Bella get Deathwing? No, Deathwing has been banned both games. Nice unstoppable there from Johanna. Good turnaround. Oh my gosh, Mephisto putting a lot of damage on the beachy man. Looks like Game of Thrones is working their way towards the objective here. Robot Wizard has the first interrupt. Chris and Aid are going to jump over there and get an interrupt in as well. Oh, but the rest of the squad is ready. Game of Thrones picks up that kill on the Chris and That will be Red Team starting the channel here on our first objective. Augur working on yet another camp capture here. Getting a significant timing lead. Or don't die first minute. Robot wizard, oh my gosh. <laughs> Manages to barrel roll back to safety, but just barely. Oh, stops it at point six. Alarak, nice shove. He's going to help secure the objective. Ichi man, oh no, Stukov taken out on the peel back. Solid kill there from don't die first minute. Mojo now being chased out. Take some damage from Mephisto. They're continuing to chase here. Robot Wizard trying to move forward and get in range. Mojo scaling away on the low side. He'll get away. Team of Throws objective is coming on through. Alarak, ooh, putting a hurt in there onto Chrisinator. His tens are in for both sides. For Game of Thrones, we're looking at the Reign of Vengeance, Flailing Swipe, Lava Wave, Counter Strike, and Divine Storm. Oh, big combo there, but Robot Wizard is cleansed after the Divine Storm lands. On the side of Don't Die First Minute, we're looking at the Durance of Hate, Portapult, Blink Heal, Mighty Gust, and Blessed Shield. And heavy rotations here. <laughs> Really reaching out right now is Game of Throws. Trying to find people on these sidelines. So far doing a decent enough job of splitting off is, uh, is Don't Die First Minute. They have given up four deaths, but against this composition, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Mid fort wall nearly down here. A couple of minion hits should do it. Plus Mojo clears this away. Bella stepping way up there. Is Chrisinator going to follow in with some extra damage? Oh, Durns of Hate on the wall. Can we step up? Going to be pulled back in. The sound used Hortipult to get over the wall. is going to try to spin away on the top side, but did not get the bounce. Just barely got the heal in time there from Toasty Buns. No one triggered the counter-strike there. Chrisinator's skull missile was just a moment too late. Did Null Camp to be cleared out. If I don't die first minute, Hog are going to get their own Null Camp going here. Going for the Ultra Super Mini Bounce. Very effective. Very, very effective. 
Hojo taking a little bit too far of a step forward here. Robot Wizard. One more auto should do it. Oh no, attack the wave! Ooh, skull missile. Getting that last hit. Oh, Johanna taken down and Brightwing as well. Nice collapse from the members of Game of Throws. I was too busy focusing on the other lane. Four dropped down and got a double kill. They say that's enough for that. They're going to grab this top boss while they can. Now we've got a camp collapsing in mid here that will have to be dealt with. Ragnaros going to throw out a lava wave to get some of this cleared out, but it does not clear out the camps very well, just the minion waves. Chrisinator going to mount up and move back to safety. The sound thinking they can get a couple more hits in here. Nice bounce trajectory. Endurance of Hate, not going to land there from Chrisinator. Look at them just roll right in here. Alarak with the pull. Chrisinator gets cleansed, tries to turn it around here with the Lightning Nova. Beachy Man swiping everyone back towards their own side of the map. Top boss taking out the top fort here. This Falstad manages to assist hearth away from Ragnaros. No one's been able to channel the objective just yet. Beachy Man working on it, but there's another Skull Missile connecting. Divine Storm doesn't quite land there from Top Gun. Still, they're looking at Chrisinator. Nice puddle placement from Beachy Man. That'll be it for Mephisto. Right Wing run down there by Mr. Hustler as well. Double kill from Game of Throws, and they're going to start to channel this objective. Two kills. Bella wants to start the boss. Fall is going to fire this up here. Does have the uh, the full hungering arrow build, so we'll be able to make quick work of this objective. Don't die first minute. Almost certainly knows this boss is happening, but there's not a whole lot they can do about it at this point. So they're just going to have to eat it and defend. Game of Thrones just forking the attention here. Going for the objective while boss pushes bottom. Chrisinator. Ooh, couldn't quite interrupt everybody there. Only 10 more seconds until the riders come on through. Bottom fort being cleaved down here by the frost giant. Ooh, Durns of Fate over the wall. Chrisinator catches two. Is that going to be enough to get through the double healer? Top Gun pulled in there. Is going to turn around with the Divine Storm. Robot Wizard. Oh, nice cutoff there from the sound on the beachy man. Stukov goes down. All the while, though, Mojo prepping this lane. Has to get out right now. He's going to try to finish this wave. That might be too little too late. Chrisinator gets the dismount. But it looks like the rest of the team not up here for the gank opportunity. Mojo does not become a building. Here comes Brightwing, and that could be what tips the scales. Ragnaros is taken down. Midfort goes as well. Two members coming around looking for Robot Wizard, who has... Ooh, avoids the one pull, but gets hit by the second CC. Oh, Vala going way forward there. <laughs> Turns of hate. Not going to land from Chrisinator. Bella vaults away from the Blessed Shield. Nice dodge there. Bottom fort goes down. Hogger doing the back camp right now as Robot Wizard looking to flank. Looks like Hogger's going to grab that camp, no problem. We've entered the quiet part of the game. Everybody, grab a sip of water. Camps will meet in the mid, so our next objective should be up soon. Top boss, 45 seconds. Bottom boss, 2 minutes, 20. 
So boss will likely be in play while this next objective is going. Goodness gracious me. Yeah, we're just in kind of lane clear mode. Not too much going on at this point. But we got a congregation on the top boss. Still 15 seconds on that one. But Game of Thrones is here and ready to go. Mid camp cleared away. So the next prison camps are getting ready to spawn up. Top boss is getting... Prepared here. Don't die first minute. Are in the area. Game of Thrones is just baiting this right now. Wild Pants going to have to scout further here. Finds two in the bush. Top Gun coming down. Wants a double stun. Is going to find it on the Christinator, but there's Robot Wizard with the Gust for safety. Nice combo there on the Falstad. Stunned inside the signs. Divine Storm. Gonna stun too, but is it enough here? Gathering up everyone is Don't Die First Minute. Uther is gonna be the first to go down. The Ghost Healing, keeping everyone from Game of Thrones alive for now. Solid get there. Can they get some more? Stun on the Bella on the top side. Oh, what a spin angle from Hogger. Just chasing down that Vala's retreat path. Vala will fall as a second death here in this engagement. Top boss. Contentious field now. <laughs> Still staying in the area, but they've only got three members. So Game of Thrones, not a whole lot they can do. Boss will be claimed by Don't Die First Minute. Uh-oh, two are stepping out. Going to be rooted by the Durance of Hate, even after the gust. Alarak picked off. We're gonna have a boss pushing during this objective. Twenties have been here for a moment for Don't Die First Minute. They're about to be here for Game of Throws. The word overpowered for Mephisto. I don't mind Mephisto being powerful because Mephisto is hard to play. It is difficult to play Mephisto well. So it's a treat to see when it is played well. There are other heroes in past balance patches that have been good, too good for how easy their build was. Mephisto, I think, does not have an easy build to be able to play at this kind of level. 20s are in for both sides here. Don't die first minute. We need a couple more seconds. Looks like they will get that. Here come the Blue Riders. We'll see if they can crack this defense of Game of Throws. Top lane pushed out. The other two lanes, not so much here. Don't die first minute. We'll see where they want to conglomerate. With this objective push. Rider surging on ahead here, going to be quickly taken care of by Game of Throws. Mighty Gust from Robot Wizard. That's going to be two put into the Durance. Oh my goodness, over the top went Falstad. And that is both healers down. Bella being healed up by the Ghost. Looks like it's going to be enough to get away. Ragnaros puts the Lava Wave mid, but that is two important kills there. Uther is going to be back with the Redemption, though. Riders on top and bottom still pretty healthy. Alarak, uh-oh, had to counter-strike, is trying to move back to safety. There's the rundown from the Mephisto. Alarak picked off. This could be multiple keeps here for Don't Die First Minute. Are they just going to ride this into the core? They've only got one structure down here. They're chasing after Mojo. Core has 40 armor right now. Looks like no, they're going to back away. 
Bottom boss appears like it's going to be the focus. Still over 30 seconds on Alarak should mean they can move in and take this without too much fuss. Scaling is right. Mephisto scaled up. Falstad getting close to 100 stacks on that Q. The full blind build is now online for Johanna. The damage is now pretty well on par here. Don't die first minute. Boss will be moving unfettered through the bottom lane. As we see a robot wizard trying to get a mid camp going in the meantime. Game of Throws. Looking to step up and clear this boss before it does, does too much damage to the core. Mid keep wall going to be the focus though. Just trying to get that down. Falstad able to finish up that objective. As our next prison camps are getting ready to unlock. Robot wizard wanting to gust to barrel roll over the wall and get a gust in once again. Not going to go for it this time. I've got eyes on our forces. Move in. Get them out of there. Objective being channeled here by Toasty Buns. The core did go taking a little bit of a hit, but we'll regenerate here. Right now, Game of Thrones, they, they pretty well have to make a move. They're going to step up here and try to take this fight. Pull is good, but the silence is not on the Robot Wizard. Moving on forward here is Top Gun. Christinator, oh, big damage onto Mr. Hustler. Divine Storm, though, from Uther tries to split this fight. Huge gust from Robot Wizard as Christinator surging on forward. Vala goes down, Alarak goes down next. Durance of Hate does not connect as Hogger runs on forward here. Finds the quick stun onto Uther, and that is going to be it. That is Redemption popped. So Uther will be back, but two other heroes are down. Don't die first minute. He's looking for mid-keep. The Riders are coming on through. It's going to take a miracle defense here for Game of Thrones, but their playoff life is on the line. They've got to try to make it happen. Waves already collapsing here as the Riders are on the way. 20 seconds on Vala and Alarak. But here comes the objective. Or is now being threatened. Here comes Don't Die First Minute. This is the push to end this game and end this series. Durns of Hate lands into the back line. Stun goes out and that will be Stukov going down. Top Gun and Mojo pushed into the corner, but the core is already taking so much damage. Two more kills for Mephisto and that is going to be the series. Don't Die First Minute takes the 2-0 and will advance. GG. Very solid game number two. Turnaround in the draft there. This time, Game of Thrones took the early game draft and they were pushing hard at the start, but the slow scaling and the slow turnaround from Don't Die First Minute, especially post level 20, was just too much power to deal with. Don't Die First Minute, congratulations, you will be moving on in the playoffs. Let's go to the post game. Check out the stats here. Chrisinator on the Mephisto, nearly 86,000 hero damage on the Lightning Bug. Bella on the Vala, a little over 64,000 damage coming out there from Game of Throws. We'll take a quick look at the talents and we'll see if we can get ourselves an interview with our victors. All right. Hey, hello, Crowley. hello. Sound toasty. Congratulations on the 2-0. We may have some more of us joining. Hey, oh, there the we rest are. of the crew coming on through. Welcome, everybody. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Thank you. Very well played today. 
I guess the first was, thing I noticed about this series was some very, um, uh, very interesting drafting, um, some very sort of extreme drafts from both sides. Did you feel like these drafts were planned ahead of time or a little bit more reactive based on how the series was going? Um, I mean, we did a fair bit of scouting ahead of this match. So we knew kind of their comfort picks and how their, like, if we banned their comfort, their most likely secondary choices. Mm. Um, the, the stitches was not expected, we'll say. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm sure they did a bunch of uh, scouting on us, too. But then they didn't ban our Falstad. Robot coming in with the Falstad. He has 100% over like 16 games in the GS now with it. Wow, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah, it's been getting banned like almost every game. Um, and today it didn't get banned, so that's why I played it. I never oh, get to saw, play it anymore. I think chat noted something like 200 stacks there in game number one on the Falstad. Yeah. yeah, I think I had like over 125 stacks before level 10, which is actually insane. Well, it was very solid play there, Braxis. Uh, yeah, it seemed like the momentum you got early on with the double healer just sort of translated through the game there. Were you, were you worried at all about it sort of slipping away and the scaling starting to come through at the end? Or did you just feel like you had control throughout? I feel like we had control throughout, to be honest. Yeah, that game especially. The second game, I think, was a lot closer. They had a lot. Their early game was really strong, that game, and they were probably winning most of that till pre-10 at least. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it seemed like the uh, the draft identity sort of flipped there for game number two. Game of Thrones took a very aggressive early game composition. You sort of took the, the scaling with the Falstad Mephisto, and you were able to sort of turn that one over. Um, in that sort of setup there, what are the comms like in terms of, you know, you know you've got a later game comp. How do you play that map to make sure you get there? Don't die. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of, like... Oh no, they're missing care side lanes. They're just ganking S4. And like all of us had our at least one careless, oh, I can step up here. And we couldn't, and we shouldn't have, and they killed us. They're like their gank attempts. That's something that we noticed in the scouting. Like their CC chain is very clean, no matter their heroes. So it's not surprising that they got a lot of really good early picks there. So well played to them on that one for sure. Yeah, their Stukov player was really good at following up the Uther stuns. Um, so they were getting a lot of the silence and then plus Alarak on top of that with the burst. Uh, yeah, it was pretty tough early game. But once you, you know, once you get Gus, then their whole CC kind of goes away. Yeah, I mean, post level 10, you saw, you know, things starting to stabilize and then definitely post level 20, that damage really got overwhelming by the end. Uh, yeah, really nicely played, really clean 2-0 there. Uh, you that puts you moving ahead into the playoffs. I believe you've got the number one seed coming up in the next round. There is that a match you've been looking forward to from uh, you know reprising from the regular season. Number one seed, uh, Duratan's couch. Okay, I think they I beat us. Very, they two yeah, owed us last time. Um, okay, Rough. yeah, that should be fun. Yeah, we Come we would love redemption. Down. Yeah. Do you yeah, feel just, like you're the kind of team that, you know, just goes with what you know into that sort of matchup, or do you like to cook up the secret strats before each sort of match? Uh, we just, honestly, we're kind of just having fun with it. We're not really, I don't feel like we're strategizing too, too much. We're just going to play whatever everybody likes to play. Yeah, we're kind of, we know what we like to play, and based on what we scout, that kind of informs which of our, you know, handful of preferences are probably best, but we're not like going into the lab and picking up a hammer out of nowhere sort of a thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, these guys don't like my murky coming out in NGS, so one day. One day. <laughs> Maybe in the finals. Hey, anything's better than that nine death Genji game he had last time. <laughs> and hey, crush, I, myself I, today, I have though. to apologize for not playing the Artanis. You know, I try to bully basically every team in NGS into playing more Artanis. I've tried tricking them into thinking there was a patch, telling them it's in the rules they have to play it. It's not working. <laughs> I'm going to have to come up with a new strat. 
I'm going to get my Arch Nemesis. I my win rate before the match, and I was like, <laughs> nope, we're not picking it. <laughs> oh, goodness me. But solid victory today. Congratulations on the win. Uh, floor is yours. Any shout outs you'd like to make before we close out? Um, uh, well, just to the first, enemy team, I guess. Good game. We'll yeah, play. shouts out to Game of Thrones. Shouts out to you for the cast. Um, a big thank you to everyone at NGS who keeps this fantastically fun rig running as well as it does. And yeah, of course, sure. yeah. Go, for go ahead, Toasty. Okay, well, uh, especially thanks to you for um, picking up the game, considering we scheduled it yesterday. So thank you for the last minute cast. <laughs> Oh, my pleasure entirely. Well, folks, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Good, thank you, Crush. Good luck on the next round. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you.